this is Tom Blackie and today I'm talking about one of my favorite dress shoes and I am a little bit biased. I will admit this ahead of time. Uh, the CEO reached out to me about a year or two ago and he sent me a couple free samples of Birchberry. Is this upside down? I don't think it is. It's a great shoe. You know, right now I've got three of them. I purchased some myself, some full disclosure they sent me, but it's been a little while. Like, I mean, look at how beat up these are. I've put some serious mileage on these. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. Keep it pretty simple. It's, uh, you know, it's not a big corporation. It was started by one guy, but he's done a great job. I'm looking at his growth. He's done phenomenal now, but I'll tell you what I like. The minimalist shoe movement, it has gotten really big. A lot of people love the fact that you can wear shoes that aren't very constrictive. So the big thing about these are, look at your toes can fit in here pretty good. And what I like about it is most dress shoes are pointy in the front and a pair of orthotics won't fit. So I'm not a huge fan of the minimalist shoes, even though a lot of people are. Uh, for younger people, they fit great and that can work great. But for older people, I recommend getting some support. I even had somebody come over today and we were talking about dress shoes and I got him to get a pair of Birchberries. And what the real key for me is you can get an orthotic in here. So you can get an orthotic in here and you can get a custom orthotic in here. You can get ones that take pressure off the front of their foot. Even without the orthotic, they give you a lot of support, but you can get a nice over the counter insert into a good pair of dress shoes and that's really what makes the difference for me. Great shoe otherwise, it's held up well. I must have put like a couple hundred uh, miles on these. I've been wearing them, I would say, you know, pretty regularly, a couple days a week for over a year or two. You could even see my regular dress shoes here. They're pretty nice. Uh, I wear these almost on a daily basis. Uh, I wear my running shoes in the hospital, but you can see a pair of dress shoes with orthotics in there. You can get those in there and this has some serious mileage on it. So a lot of casual shoes, they're pointy in the front. And what happens is that squeezes on your toes. That can create some bunion pain, some hammer toe pain. And number two, there is generally minimalist shoe type stuff. And what happens is it's too flexible. It doesn't have a lot of support. The heel's not very supportive you want some good features in your shoe that support it but at the same time you want that freedom to have your toes moving around so a couple basic features i look for in a shoe are it basically needs some support see how this casual shoe does not support you at all see how the back's not supporting you in the birchberry shoe stiff back see how it's pretty stiff it doesn't twist too much so when i grab it i'm really trying to twist and see how it doesn't bend in the middle and what happens is when you land see it bends just at the big toe whereas in another casual shoe see how it bends in the middle and i know i'm being kind of hard on this guy but oxford dress shoes for example have a heel lift this has no heel lift the heel sits at the same level as the toes it's not driving the pressure into your toes most casual dress shoes or dressy shoes have a pointy front see how it creates a v these guys right here it's more of a curved one and i'm going to show you in a graphic why that's not crushing your toes. So two factors crush your toes, the pointy front, plus when your foot twists out, your foot gets wider and flattens more. So this one, because it doesn't bend and it's got the stiff heel, your foot doesn't flatten out as much and the toes don't spread out as much and it's not crushed by the V point in the front at the same time. So those, fact, those two factors really help your toes during a long day when you're walking, when you're at a nice dinner, when you're at a nice meeting. I'm not a huge material guy, but it is a leather shoe. It's pretty nice. Personally, see these insoles right here? They brag about them on the website a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of the insoles. Are these anything special? They're a little bit nice. They got a little bit cushion. But what happens is, here's why I really like these shoes. Right here, an over-the-counter insert. If I can get an over-the-counter insert into a shoe and it can relatively fit, in there because the toes aren't pointy, then you can fit a nice over-the-counter insert. And my favorites are down in the show notes, but for my money, if you can get an insert that's pretty low cost and put it in a dress shoe, 
there's no reason you can't stand all day with relatively little pain. Whereas if I stood in a shoe like this, this would absolutely obliterate my foot in like half an hour. So you have all the factors you need in a shoe, the stiff heel, the flexibility, the lack of crush up here, you can fit an orthotic in there and that's gonna really take a lot of pressure off your foot. So one thing I always say is, if there's no orthotic, look at how the foot flattens out. And we know in the other shoe, it already crushes in the middle. Whereas in an orthotic, now granted, I'm giving the shoe too much credit, but the fact that it fits an orthotic is huge. See how it's not flattening out there? That is huge for me. That is a number one criteria for me when getting a casual or a dress shoe. The next thing I really like is check out the laces right here. Self-lacing, plus you can pull the tongue out, it comes down, easy to slip on, especially if you're an older person, if you need to use a shoehorn, uh, it's already taken care of, another nice feature. What does zero drop mean? This is not a zero drop. See how much lift you have here? And then up here, it's a little bit less. Nor most normal running shoes are like an eight to 12 millimeter lift in the heel compared to the front. That takes a little bit of pressure off the heel. These guys kind of go with the barefoot element because it's equal at the back and as the front. Generally, younger people tolerate that well. If you're older, like 60, 50, 70, that, I know that's not the usual YouTube crowd, but you generally want to get a little bit more of a heel lift. Whereas if you're younger, go with a zero drop, unless you have like Achilles tendonitis or something like that, because that will keep you flexible. That will keep your muscles working. The whole debate of barefoot shoe versus non-barefoot shoe, I can talk about that all day. And in fact, we have a video right here to talk about it. There's a lot of factors. Generally, if you're younger and healthier, go with more of a barefoot. If you're older and have more problems in your knees, your hips, and other places, go with something with a little bit more of a heel lift, a little bit more cushion, a little bit more support. That's a general rule that I see work well. As much as I'm raving about these, this is not sponsored. I'm not getting paid to do this, um, but I like this because it has a lot of room in the toes. It's not pointy. It's stiff through the, through the midsole. It's stiff through the heel. It's easy to get on. It has zero heel drop, which is good for younger people. And it fits an orthotic. So I'm not a huge fan of these, even though they brag about them on their website. I get another over-the-counter insert or my custom insert in here. Not a lot of dress shoes can fit the custom insert. So that's why I love these. If you do have a dress shoe, like an Oxford tennis shoe, you know, some people have to use a shoe stretcher. I go over a video how to use the shoe stretcher. But see, this guy doesn't need that. It's already done for you. There's room in the toes. So here, there's a link in the bottom. These are called the Birchberry Bramfords. Um, you know, they kind of range $100 to $150, depending on what time you get them. But check out the link down below and see if you agree. They give a 30 day refund policy. So if you don't like them, and you could tell, he, here's a nicer, newer one. I haven't really opened that up. And you could tell, I'm gonna get the paper out of here. It's stuffed in there. And even without the orthotic, you know, they're not bad, but I would recommend getting over the counter orthotic because I'm a biased podiatrist, but I would recommend you do that. So Birchberries, look at, these are really nice right here. These ones I haven't worn. These are more the brown ones. I've been wearing the dark ones. Like, I mean, I'm talking a year of consistent wearing and more like the casual shoes right here. These are pretty good. Get some orthotics in there. If you need dress shoes that you can get orthotics into, get yourself a pair of Birchberries. There's some promo codes down here, some links. Uh, owner's a great dude, great pair of shoes. They're durable. Are they the cheapest? They're probably not the cheapest. I'm sure you could get cheaper ones out there. But personally, that's my dress shoe that I'm using right now. And if you guys want to as well, uh, go for it. They are a great company, great guy. Um, they message while well. they're very polite. Hit the subscribe for amazing foot content, onions, heel paint, everything for the foot and ankle. Do it safely and cost effectively. We've got you covered. So subscribe.